Um, so we're just going to in, into a little bit of a, a presentation the first time we've put slides on the screen. Um, just to talk about our kind of thoughts. So um, Harry, um, Amelia, Matt and I um, are all part of the team at YL Project Hope, a community interest company that was set up um, during the pandemic, um, but that is entirely youth led. And some of you might have heard us speak last I Will Week um, about our thoughts on what it really means to be youth led. So we thought we'd just give you a bit of our thoughts um, on what we think the definition of social action could be and how that works. So we've got a couple of definitions um, that already exist. So we've got this definition, um, which was created with the purpose of research relating to young people in 2014. Um, that is young people taking practical action in the service of others in order to create positive social change that is of benefit to the wider community as well as the young person themselves. It is a form of volunteering with emphasis on social change. So um, that probably that definition probably doesn't fit with some of the uh, conversations that I've had this morning um, in terms of can that work if we're paid, um, but also does fit with the idea of that double benefit and it needing to be a reciprocal thing. So what about this one? Um, this was one that was created while the campaign was a campaign, not a movement, um, and while it was um, being run by Step Up to Serve. So this expanded on it a little bit with what it looks like in practice. So social action refers to activities that people do to make a positive difference to others or the environment. There are lots of ways in which people can take practical action to make a positive difference and it can take place in a range of contexts and can mean formal or informal activities. These include volunteering, fundraising, campaigning or supporting peers. So this was a bit of a broader definition, I guess, um, and might fit a bit better with some of the discussions that we've had this morning, but maybe still doesn't quite cover it. Um, so there might be even more that we could do to define this better. So our personal definitions as a team. Um, so my one is first on there. So um, I actually might change this having heard discussions, but um, my pre thoughts to this discussion were that it's making a difference in your community at whatever level that is and whatever way that that looks like from micro volunteering to peer support. If its intention is to make a difference, then it is social action. Um, so that was kind of my thoughts on it. Then you've got my definition, um, which is a positive impact for those around you, um, your local community, society, town, and even globally. And um, this may be something small or volunteering, taking action, advocacy, and so much more. It's simply about making a difference. And then you've got my uh, definition, which is an action designed to improve the lives of the wider community. And then I've included some really small examples like doing some gardening or, or writing a blog to share some information. Um, yeah, so as you can see, there's similarities in our definitions and there's also differences. Um, and I'm pretty sure that if we asked everybody to come up with a sentence definition, um, everybody's sentence would be slightly different, but I'm sure there would also be some overlaps. So that's something for you to think about. What would your sentence be to define it? Um, so then we've got our scale. So um, this will be a scale that's familiar to some of you um, and less familiar to others. We presented this during I Will Week of last year. Um, which was around what it means to be youth led. But we thought this was an interesting um, discussion because it covers many of the elements of different kinds of social action and what that can look like. So um, I'll let Matt start off the scale. Yeah, so you know, this is it's a sliding scale. It's not like set steps. Um, so the, first, the at one end of the scale, you've got no young people involved at all. Um, and then we've got youth consultation. So this might be your surveys that you add out. And um, something to think about is, is a young person filling out a survey and sharing their views? Is that social action? Um, have they taken part in some kind of social action by taking part in your consultations as an organisation? And I know that there's been lots of consultation in the last few years, perhaps too much for young people's liking. Um, and, and then the next stage is uh, youth participation, where they're uh, not just being consulted, but actually getting on the ground, getting their hands dirty and get, and doing uh, whatever it is that uh, the the action is is designed to do. 
And then we've got collaboration. So this is your typical 50-50 in a room um, where you've got young people and adults um, as equal stakeholders in the room. So they're collaborating um, and both have an equal say in that situation. Um, so I'm, I'm sure that would be social action. The question is, are the adults in the room also doing social action if they're at that equal level? I suspect from our discussions, the answer is yes in this room. And then the next one up is a, a, a bit more of a youth heavy split which is a supported youth led which means that the, the the main driving force is youth but it is supported by adults who have experience and uh, are, are willing to take a step back and just offer advice when when the youth need it and finally our completely youth led so um project hope as an example of that um, where all members of the organisation, the project, are young people, the ideas are being driven by them um, and um, they don't feel that they need the support um, of, of other people within that, they can drive that action themselves. Um, and I think there's no question over whether that could be social action or not, um, it very definitely is. So um, we've got a challenge, um, you probably don't have one minute to be honest, um, but you can um, reflect on this in your own time. But reflecting on the scale we've created, um, can you think of examples of social action that go in each part of the scale? Um, and what makes those opportunities meaningful for young people um, that are taking part in that social action? What makes it social action? Then we've got some anagrams. So um, I wonder if anybody can unscramble these in the chat. Um, usually it's a bit of a battle between young people and adults to see who can get there quick enough. So see if anybody can unscramble these. The letters are in the words that they're supposed to be in. Yes, Ruth and <laughs> Ruth and Tanita have smashed it cat, yes. There we go. So tip one, be clear on the agenda. Tip three, let young people take ownership. What is the middle one? Can I say that was that was ridiculous. That was really quick. Quick. Kat, you're on it. Have a variety of opportunities. Ruth is on it as well. Have you guys like seen this presentation <laughs> before or something? Have you two of these anagrams lower? were from last year? So anyone who was in our session um, last year did have an advantage on tip one and three. I haven't seen them. Just um, I'm a big nerd and love puzzles. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So we've got a bit more on our tips. So tip one. Be clear on the agenda. So ensure you know what type of help you want from young people. Think about the scale and be honest with young people about what that opportunity looks like. What kind of social action is it? What can they expect from you? What does that look like? And be really clear on what your agenda is with that. Tip two, have a variety of opportunities. As we've seen, social action can take so many different forms and different types suit different young people. Variety is key. One thing that works for some people won't work for others. Um, and I think an example that's just kind of in my mind at the moment is that idea of payment. For some young people, absolutely payment is a necessity to make sure that that's accessible. Um, but other young people, and I know that there's I Will ambassadors who have shared this, that actually payment can add a kind of obligation. It can make it feel like more than it is, like they're required to do it and can become actually quite a scary part of taking part in social action um, for them. And then tip three, let young people take ownership. Um, be flexible, trust young people and be ready to listen. Um, young people have amazing ideas, as I'm sure you all know in this room, but be ready to listen to their ideas and they want to share them with you. But make sure you're also giving credit where it's due. Um, it's really easy to kind of run with those ideas and claim them as your own, but make sure that you're crediting the young people that you work with for what they have done. So that's our um little input and I don't know if anybody in the team wants to share anything else before we move on to our panel but I'm not sure if we've got all of our panel here. I just think I'd, I just think I'd stress that the um you know when we said that it's not a hierarchy a scale I think that's really important to recognize is that sometimes actually a really structured youth participation opportunity in social action where you are facilitating everything and the young people are turning up you know I think things like the big litter pick which we've seen be really successful are a really great example of that where young people are given a really structured way into social action particularly for young people at a young age and they're showed you know this is the impact that you can have on your community that that is really powerful in some situations and so i think it's just really important to stress that it's not 
it's not us saying that everything has to be completely youth led. It's just saying that there is, you know, a variety of opportunities that are going to work for a variety of young people. And it's just useful to stop and think about where you are on that scale and make sure that you're honest with young people about where you're positioning your opportunities, I think is the key takeaway. 100% Harry and I think we've we've said this before quite a lot is that being at that kind of consultation stage isn't a bad thing sometimes that is absolutely what's necessary and that's why young people actually want to offer their views um, and feel comfortable taking that step into it so it's it's not a bad thing um, to be at any stage of that but I think I think I heard this before but it's always that idea of kind of um, striving for more and kind of seeing what else you can do to make sure it's truly meaningful um, and that you add this to those opportunities and that's driven like we said in tip three it's driven by what young people that you're working with want um, and need out of that situation and that might be that what they want is to go up go and set up their own organization and be separate from you um, that is okay too think I'm handing to Harry now but I'm not entirely sure if we have yeah. the full panel if not I will step in yeah <laughs> we'll dive in we're going to dive in dive into a panel so basically we have got some ambassadors here if you guys want to flick your cameras on I can see Matt I can see Naomi which is wonderful there we go excellent cool let's just whiz around first of all and do a round of intros um so obviously Matt Naomi we know who we are um Naomi, do you just want to tell us a little bit about kind of your social action? How do you get involved, first of all? Yeah, so my social action started um, when I was actually really young. So I probably would say my first social action experience, I was probably around the age of six. Um, so um, I'd grown up um, in a tiny village in North Wales and um, my mum was part of the PTA. Um, it was kind of, she was very into social action. Um, and I thought it was a way for me to make a difference um, to my school. So I, I used to kind of listen in to, to meetings and be like, can I help? Can I come up with a game um, right from that age? And so that's kind of where my social action started. But it, I would probably say it really, really kicked off when I was about 14. And I became really passionate about mental health, having had my own experiences um, and set up my own project within the school where I um, ran workshops for students and then it's kind of like been on this social action spiral um ever since so it's been um a, a massive journey with lots of different social action experiences along the way um and now i work in youth participation with mind um where i get to facilitate that social action um for other young people so i am going to pass that same question on to sian so if you could tell us a bit about um your experiences um, quite similar to Naomi, I started social action quite young. Um, so I started it a slightly bit older than six. I was about 10 in guiding at the time. It was just sort of the volunteering you do to like get your badges and things to, you know, for, at that point it was the motivation to get, you know, the most badges and I was in a little bit of a competition with my friend. And then as time went on, I ended up joining projects at school and doing my DV and things and just joining loads of different volunteering things. And that sort of spiraled into me getting involved in the youth work department in my local area. So I'm from the Scottish borders originally. Um, and they convinced me to run for the Scottish Youth Parliament, which I was elected into. And then I ended up being elected into the UK Youth Parliament a couple of months later for South of Scotland, which was a bit of a whirlwind because at, at that point in time, I wasn't the most confident person. I was a bit scared of public speaking, but somehow ended up in this whirlwind of social action that just pushed me to do things and um, I ended up giving speeches at the parliament um, and um, going to the House of Commons and um, doing loads of really exciting and fun things that I never imagined I would do um, so I definitely say that it's one of those things once you start young it just it snowballs um, I'm still doing volunteering now although not involved with the youth parliament I do most of it around I will and volunteering with young Scott up in Scotland doing a few co-design projects with them so I'm doing some on the youth VIP report, which um, I was involved in the creation of and then now looking at the implementation of that. Um, and also the Young Persons Guarantee, which kind of links into the youth VIP report, but around more youth employment and giving young people skills and helping them into education, training or volunteering. So looking at things like that to help young people into employment. So really pushing that link between social action and youth employment there on that side too. Um, and I'll pass on to um, Matt next. Thank you very much. Yeah, I started volunteering much later than uh, these do. I must have been about 14, 15. Um, and 
yeah it was it was very small I just helped out with my uh, the youth group that I'd gone to growing up um, manning the tuck shop uh, which was something I was very happy to do it was out the way and you know I got very little attention which just suited me down to the ground um, but as I got older I you know went much like Naomi I went through my own kind of experiences with mental health and I, I became really passionate about um, not only sharing what it's like from the perspective of, of someone that suffers from mental illness um, but also educating people who haven't been through that journey um, and finding out a way of being able to explain it to them because quite often um, it's very difficult to explain just quite what goes on in somebody's head to someone that's not been through it before um, and then have become part of Project Hope uh, and helped set it up and you know and, and I'm still part of that to this day um, and I'm continually to be passionate about you know, uh, you know how, how do we view education and how do we use that to help people you know influence social action get involved um, understand you know either the environment or mental health or whatever yeah no, that's all really interesting i think there's a couple of kind of it's really interesting first of all i think to hear everyone to some degree touching on that kind of um like personal motivation almost and i think that's a really important thing to bear in mind when it comes to when it comes to things like this when it comes to social action you know young people are very often kind of motivated by that personal experience or that that kind of you know which, which can be quite emotional and can make it a difficult a difficult challenge to think they're doing so i think that's where they're kind of thinking about the scale that's where they're kind of you know the supported youth led those kind of steps could really have value and i think it's also really interesting to hear about the kind of diversity of opportunities that allowed you to take to take your first step um so kind of you know matt that kind of you know youth parliament almost you know kind of sorry um the youth parliament to kind of matt's talk shop um you know it's kind of really interesting to see that breadth of opportunity as well um and i just think i mean it would be really interesting we've been speaking all morning about kind of this this kind of how this line between kind of what social action is and what social action isn't um i just wondered it would be really interesting to hear about when when you were participating in social action or when you're when you're doing things now in your kind of day-to-day -day life what what do you think of as social action what do you you know do you think of kind of looking after a friend who's struggling doing shopping for a neighbor do those things pop into your head immediately and you know from a young person's perspective do you think of them as social action i don't know whether there's anyone who wants to take that first I don't mind jumping in. Go for um, it. Yeah, I think for me, like I think it does encompass so much and that's why I really like the term social action actually, because I think it can capture so much more. Like quite often we hear organisations talking about participation or we hear them talking about youth work or we hear them talking about volunteering, but actually I think that excludes a lot of the things that, that actually count. Um, and I think, it was only kind of as I got involved in I will that I thought, oh, actually, like these experiences from when I was younger actually were social action. Like I grew up as a young carer and actually like what I was doing there to support things like could be counted within that. Um, but also that I think it's important that we get young people to to recognize those small things that they do. Like it doesn't need to be these grand big things. I know this is a conversation that comes up time and time again is like young people feeling like what they do is not good enough that it's not big enough that it it's not on this massive scale and obviously as i will ambassadors a lot of us have been involved in lots of really massive projects um and kind of been put on that platform but actually those things that happen at a really local level like that kind of community level supporting a friend in school peer mentoring whatever that looks like i think is social action i think as long as they're wanting to make that difference in their communities. I think, yeah, who are we to say that's not social action? Yeah, Matt, have you got any thoughts on that? Well, I think much like, you know, I, uh, as I said in the intro, became an Iowa ambassador this year. 
Um, and you know, up until this point, I'd never really come across the term social action. Um, it was it it it, it when yeah you know, when I became an animal ambassador, I had to go away and Google it. Um, yeah, and I, I'm uh, at this point, I'm now 25. So I spent 20, you know, a good a good 10 years of doing what I now understand is social action um, without actually understanding that that's what it was. Um, so now wh whenever I'm doing, you know, some form of volunteering or supporting a friend or whatever, um, I have to go, oh yeah. Um, it, it's social action rather than just kind of doing what I think is right um, and going out of my way and taking time out of my day to, to try and make a positive influence. Um, so, yeah, it can be big or small, no matter what. It's, it, it, it's always, you know, positive um, just to maybe... Yeah, the word, the term social action can be big and scary, but actually, it's it's not as daunting as as uh, maybe the the news makes it feel when they just show all these marches, which are brilliant, and I you know thoroughly recommend getting involved in one. Um, but actually, it can be so much smaller than that. But you don't, you know, like you don't hear people on the news going so and so um, did their gardening today uh, on their front lawn and planted some beautiful flowers for all, for us all to look at that is still social action you're benefiting the community but okay people may not be shouting about it on quite the global scale yeah no it's definitely interesting to think of that kind of the utility of the broadness of the term if that makes sense and kind of the yeah how, how useful that can be i always think one of the things that is that is amazing about social action is it can give young people a real sense of kind of purpose a real sense of Kind of being able to have an impact within their community in a real kind of you know shows the power of, of, of themselves i think that's yeah that's really interesting um see i don't know if you've got any thoughts on that any um, kind, of reflections yeah. to have? kind of similar to what matt was saying the, the idea that quite often you can see social action as this big thing that is like you know you see like greta thunberg doing amazing things speaking to the un and that, yeah, that's social action, but so is that person sitting in their school asking their teacher to, you know, repaint the classroom or something. You know, if they're doing something that's, they're doing any sort of campaigning, whether that's even just on a, a small scale is social action. Even just doing a little bit of fundraising, holding a raffle is social action. I think it's really important that we do have that broad definition so people actually see that, like, their small things that they're doing is actually making a big difference in the long run, because um, I think it can be so easy, especially as someone who, like quite often I do it myself when I don't have the time to dedicate to the volunteering I do as much. And I feel like, oh, I'm not doing enough. And I see other people doing all these amazing things. And particularly during lockdown, I find it really difficult because I couldn't, I had too much going on with uni moving online and things to actually do social action. And I saw so many other people going out, you know, starting up these community groups and delivering shopping to people and I just I didn't have I don't drive I can't do that sort of thing anyway so I think it's just being aware that of your own social action is more important than what everyone else is doing as well just because sometimes it can be so easy to just compare yourself to others and you know that buzzword you always hear imposter syndrome I think everyone gets that when they do volunteering it's always I'm not doing enough and then you look back and think yeah but you've already done so much you're allowed to take a break and you know your social action doesn't stop being as worthy just because you're not doing it at that point in time yeah no it's interesting i always i love the i love the question um who's looking after the people who are looking after the people that's kind of a i just think that's always a really interesting kind of it popped into my mind as you were speaking there but it's really important to to reflect on that kind of the you know the thinking of social action is something that that can be really emotionally draining at times and can be you know you've got to make sure that you you take the time to step back and kind of almost get that kind of competitive or comparative nature of it is definitely something to to try and avoid. I think that definitely came through there. Um, so it'd be really interesting to think now a little bit about, you know, we've, we've spoke about kind of some of the some of the pitfalls, maybe. What can like what could organizations do? So I think there's there's probably a lot of amazing people in this room right now who 
have amazing roles in facilitating social action in, in young people's lives and in supporting young people to, to engage in social action, you know, thinking about the scale, a lot of those kind of, you know, the youth participation, youth consultation opportunities right through to their kind of, you know, being completely youth led organisations. Um, what would you guys like to see more from organisations that are facilitating social action for young people? What can they do to make it more accessible to broaden that definition and make young people see kind of the value in, in what they're doing. Um, Matt, I don't think you've started yet, so I'm going to put you on the spot with this one. Yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah, I think education has something to do with that. Um, yeah, the, I honestly think the best way to, to get people involved is, is to go to them rather than expecting them to come to you. Um, Okay, so maybe that may keep going into into schools, holding assemblies, um, and just you know explaining what social action is um, and what that looks like on a very small scale. Because um, for me, with social action, I'll, I'll try not to go too far into this because it's <laughs> it answers the following question. Um, but I think if you're if you're enabling young people to have those opportunities no matter how big or how small um actually you're they're more likely to go okay i see a way in um because it can it can sound so daunting as we've already touched upon that actually if you're providing them with if you're going to them and going look there's loads of things that you can get involved with just pick one um for you know it can it, it can be like for you know five minutes you know you know or you know during break time that you just meet and have a conversation or something like that um it's it, it can be that small um so i really think going to them and explaining what it is is a really is a really big step yeah almost that kind of signposting function of that kind of yeah pointing on the road and see and it definitely sounds like that was kind of part of your experience or kind of part of how you first got involved I don't know if there's anything you want to add to what to what Matt's just said in terms of what what organizations can do to support young people more um yeah I definitely think even just linking them up with um ongoing opportunities um so you know if you're doing something that's sort of like a time a time sensitive project and you know it's wrapping up if you're aware of something or another organization that does similar things to what that young person's interested in it can really help because sometimes if you just don't um you don't really have the connections to the sector you don't find those things and i know personally now especially in scotland the, the youth social action side there is very um everyone seems to know each other quite well you know i think even in, through i will you notice that everyone's involved in projects that kind of overlap i think it can be quite easy to assume that there's all these amazing young people doing stuff but quite often like I know I've been to things where I've only saw this one person once and I don't know what they're doing now. I don't know if they're doing something different or not. Um, so I think it's always good to make sure that like you can support those young people to find further opportunities. And also just a little plug, um, if you're looking for other um, ways and recommendations of how you could support um, young people, the Youth VIP recommendations does have quite a few useful things. Um, a lot of it is more Scottish focused, but quite a lot of it does apply to you know social action in general for young people particularly for volunteering, not so much, you know, if they're doing activism and things, but um, just things around, you know, supporting them to get involved um, in further opportunities and things, and even just highlighting it more, um, just if anyone wants to have a look at them. Um, and also, you can tweet me or DM me on Twitter if you want to have any questions about that as well. Yeah, no, we've definitely, I feel like we've definitely unpacked that kind of, this signposting role that the organisations can play for young people, and I think it is really important the point that you made there about kind of these you know organizations that have access to you know amazing young people who have you know perhaps a kind of you know not not the typical young person who would be passed around in the um yeah who would kind of be passed around in the social action circle i quite often call it in that you do see you see the very much you know the same young people popping up in different spaces and kind of you know broadening that group and kind of helping to celebrate the achievements of, of that that broader broader group, I think is definitely going to help. Naomi, we've unpacked that kind of signposting function that the organisations can play. Is there anything else that you think, you know, you would challenge people in this room now to go away and do to kind of support young people on their social action journeys? 
Yeah, I just want to say I 100% agree with that. And I think like one of the big things is, yeah, making sure you're not keeping young people to yourself um, and that you're not thinking, yep, we've got them. So we're going to keep them now um, and make sure that you can link them up to other people. But I think for me, um, the big thing that I think organisations can do is is work with young people to challenge what they believe is possible. Um, if it wasn't for organisations that have supported me along the way in my social action journey who have kind of challenged me to step outside of my comfort zone to try something different um, to do other things I don't think I'd have had the belief that I actually could make a difference um, I think when I first got involved it was kind of like oh I can kind of like do this locally like that's that's all I can do and now I'm sat here like leading a community interest company that's benefited so many young people in the last 18 months. I didn't believe that was possible. If you spoke to kind of 14 year old me when I was kind of first really getting into social action, I was terrified. I wasn't like, I wouldn't be sat here on a panel. I wouldn't be doing any of this, but actually it was organizations who said, look what you can do. Like there's so many opportunities out here and like we're here to support you to, to challenge that and to see what you want to try and what works for you um it, it was kind of like they they met me where i was at and then kind of walked on that journey with me um that has allowed me to see way more of what's possible and i think that's what we need to be doing is really kind of broadening those kind of horizons for young people and making them see that there's so much out there that they can do and their voices are important and um like yeah there's just so much out there that they can get involved in because i think for a lot of young people it can be hard to see that it can be hard to see what what is there what you can do it, it's easy to to like come up before around the imposter syndrome to think i couldn't do that that's not me that's for greta thunberg to be speaking to the un but actually no that's like any young person who wants to do that does have the the ability to kind of work towards like doing those those bigger things if that's what they want to do um but it just takes that belief um, from others around them. And I think organisations have that role to play in having that belief in young people that they can do whatever they want to do. Yeah, no, 100%. There's a there's an amazing TED Talk um, by a person called Rita Pearson, who she's an educator, who I would imagine a lot of people in this room will have seen it. But if you haven't, she talks about every single child needing a champion in their life and every every child deserving an adult who will never give up on them and kind of will you know back them. And I think what is just really come through there Naomi from your reflections is the power in that kind of you know that those kind of personal relationships and you know we've got I'm sure we've got some youth workers in the room with those kind of you know those really you know kind of small scale interactions with young people the impact that they can go on to have um you know I think really you know really is kind of there to see and I think yeah Naomi you've just hit on that kind of you know massively um and I think that the last thing that I would add is kind of in terms of things that things that organizations can do um to support young people i think this is kind of a bit of a bigger kind of call i think there's a need for a kind of real pulling together across across the sector a real kind of collaboration to kind of you know look at you know opportunities that that young people young people need and to you know not not be pulling in different directions if that makes sense to really kind of come together and be looking at okay how can we really support young people to engage in in opportunities um and pull kind of pull the pull the different opportunities that exist together i think that's a real kind of you know challenge and hopefully something that, that the sector is going to get into in years to come um so yeah we've talked a lot throughout this about kind of the the amazing things that that young people do and kind of the, you know the amazing social action that i'm sure everybody in this room knows and acknowledges goes on um any thoughts about how we how we kind of celebrate, how we champion that, how do we kind of, how do we show young people in kind of, you know, amazing, doing the amazing things that that they do? Um, and how can, you know, what impact can that have? I think is the next question. So kind of what, yeah, how do we celebrate young people and what what can that go on to do? Why is that representation of social action important? Um, Sian, I don't know whether you've got any thoughts that you want to kind of kick us off with on that. Um, I think just even highlighting what, can be considered social action is important first of all because a lot of people just don't see themselves as doing it you know someone volunteering to coach a sports club doesn't think that they're doing that even if they're not getting paid they don't see that as their social action they see that as a hobby and it's not because you know they are giving something back to their community they're helping normally younger children 
get into the sport that they love and I think it's really important to know that that is social action it's not just you know volunteering at the charity shop or um you know helping out at a youth club doing the tuck shop it is also doing something that even if it's for a career reason you know you want to be a PE teacher so you get a coaching qualification you're still doing something out of your own like out of your own time to do that even if you're getting some personal benefit like it's still social action and I think being aware of that is really important for young people and um, because sometimes we can always be seen as you know there's all these words going around just now of like performative activism and things like that when sometimes actually it is okay to shout about what you're doing um because you are doing good and I think it's important to like highlight the difference between raising awareness of opportunities and things you're doing and you know the idea that you're just showing off because I feel like we're at this age um particularly in Gen Z it's kind of seen as you shouldn't shout about what you're doing if you're not doing something that's absolutely amazing and speaking to the UN and I think we need to stop except expecting big things from everyone because everyone's little things do make a difference yeah no definitely I think that that speaks to the the reflection that potentially we had we had earlier on as well about kind of you know I think it was it might have been James somebody was definitely reflecting on kind of the extent to which you know, with the expectation that we have on young people and their social action and actually acknowledging and champion, championing those things has been really important. Yeah, totally, totally love that. Um, Naomi, um, let's throw that over to you now. Um, if you've got any kind of thoughts on what organisations can do to really champion and celebrate young people. I think one of the big things, and it, it's something we, we all kind of like touched on earlier, is that idea of like really looking after um, the young people that you're working with and valuing their well-being um, and making sure that we're you know I think we've created like this kind of space where young people are doing amazing things but actually they're burning out really quickly because we're putting our whole selves into this work all the time um, and actually I think the biggest thing that you can do to champion young people is to make sure you're looking after them make sure you're supporting them to look after their own well-being not adding pressure where pressure isn't needed um, and being really flexible, because I think that is where the biggest difference can happen. Um, I think for so many of us, we've we've experienced like so much burnout as a result of our social action um, that could have been prevented, actually, if we'd, you know, like Sian said earlier, if we took a week off and thought, OK, that's fine. Um, like that doesn't take away from the fact that I've already done all of this stuff and it doesn't mean I can't go back to it. Um, I think yeah it's just really important that we're making sure that as organizations we're looking after the young people we're working with we're not choosing the same young people all the time to do all the things so that they've got that pressure on them to to do that all the time um at this point i'm gonna um so lanai has joined us um for the panel um so i'm just gonna i'm gonna hand over to lanai um if you want to just introduce a bit about your social action and kind of any kind of thoughts you've had just listening in those those couple of minutes you've just joined us yeah thank I'm, I'm gonna so step much. out of the panel so okay <laughs> thank you so much I'm so sorry I'm late everyone um I'm Lanai I'm I've been an IWI ambassador for about a year and I've predominantly been volunteering with the charity Volunteering Matters on their project um, What's Up, which stands for Women Against Sexual Exploitation and Violence Speak Up. And I've also volunteered through I Will with the charity UK Youth on the hashtag Young and Black campaign. Um, I think to add to kind of what um, Naomi was saying, I really agree with everything about the importance of safeguarding young people. We're going through so much growing in our adolescence. So when we're volunteering and things, I think it's important that we all remember that actually we all have things going on behind closed doors that we don't necessarily share. And it's really important that we are kind of kind to everyone at all ages, really, but especially young people, because um, you know, we're we're trying to grow and find ourselves. And I think, again, from what Naomi was saying about um, just creating platforms that are accessible. So just remembering that not all young people like to use their voice to articulate themselves. Um, and we need to make sure that we're creating platforms where young people don't just have to speak. They can um, have loads of different forms to express themselves. Um, I think that's really important. And yeah, not hearing the same voices. So making sure that we go to those communities that aren't always heard uh, because it's not that they're hard to reach. It's that sometimes we find them difficult 
um, in terms of the things that they bring to the table. We need to learn to kind of tackle our unconscious bias and be able to listen to all communities equally. Um, but yeah, that's kind of it. Thank you. Yeah, no, 100%. And we've got a couple of questions in the chat as well, which I think really relate to Lenai, actually, what you've just you've just been speaking about. And I really, I really love, I'm thinking back to that session last year about kind of, you know, certain groups of young people not being hard to reach, but being easy to ignore. Um, I'm, I'm thinking back to that. I think that, yeah, really prominent. And that is still floating around on the internet somewhere, so if people didn't see that, um, you know, sort of plug to that one, go and, go and have a nosy at that, absolutely. Um, and yeah, so the question we've got coming from Emma, we'll kick off with, um, which is thinking about a time when, something hasn't worked when you've been burnt out or when kind of, you know, the organization, how have organizations that you've worked with in those situations helped you to kind of sustain your social action journey while also looking after you? So any any ideas of kind of best practice that, that springs to mind when, you know, when something hasn't worked or when you've been burnt out, how have organizations helped to keep you ticking over? Um, any thoughts from anyone in the room on that? I think when something hasn't worked, I think it's always good to take a step back for a week or so just to kind of distance yourself from it, um, which also helps with not getting burnt out on it because it's really easy to get burnt out when you start to get into, start getting discouraged. Um, so kind of having a bit of a break and then coming back to it and going, OK, so it didn't work. What can we learn? Because um, actually it yeah it, it it may it may be the fact that it it didn't not work it just didn't work as well as we'd hoped so it's taking okay what did work and how can we use that to influence the next thing what didn't work and how can we make sure we don't make the same mistakes um and yeah i also think it's helpful to have an outside view on some of those things so someone that's not kind of so emotionally invested in what what you've been pouring you know, your time and your effort into uh, and, and to some extent certainly for me you know, your well-being into that you have you're so invested in it that you start to sacrifice your own well-being to, for for the betterment of this kind of thing um so yeah it's, it's really important to kind of take a step back whatever happens even if something's gone really well is to take a step back take a bit of time for yourself and then come back to it because otherwise um you're going to get burnt out and uh yeah the best you you can give is a healthy you yeah 100 percent. you've got to make sure that you give the best of you to what you do not what's left over from the burnout wreck of your life yeah no 100 percent um absolutely agree with that and i think that this this idea of kind of respecting boundaries is really important i think that you know when when somebody who is employed by an organization takes a week off on leave and sticks and out of office on their email you would never expect a reply in that period and i think it's about you know the same sort of expectations for for young people as well you know i will quite often stick out of office on and just say you know I, i'm not around for a week um, and that's just because i'm kind of you know disappearing and i'm you know doing other things um, and yeah, I think respecting that is really important. Um, Lenai, Sian, I don't know whether there's anything that kind of springs to mind for either of you on that. Um, just, yeah, quickly, I think a lot of youth social action um, for me is kind of tackling injustices that I'm passionate about, but it also means that often the things I'm trying to fight against are things that affect me personally. And so definitely in my youth social action journey, I've learned to um, take more time with myself that actually when I'm tackling women's rights or Black Lives Matter, actually realizing this is quite heavy for me. And I think at first I felt a lot of responsibility to speak up um, for these things and to support my community, but also just yeah checking in with yourself that actually you know I need to take some time and definitely with the UK youth um young and black campaign they really kind of prioritize that and I realized that okay wow I can like I don't just have to constantly do everything and there's not this pressure um to like be involved in everything the power of saying no is really important <laughs> and I think sometimes um when you're volunteering and you're doing 
you know things for free or you commit to something we get afraid to say oh actually like I'm too busy now and stuff and I've definitely done a lot of things where I probably shouldn't have been but I felt too bad to back out and you should never feel bad um because yeah the fact that you're volunteering and offering your time in the first place is incredible so don't forget to celebrate young people even when they cancel on you um and things like that because we have so much going on so yeah Fab. Yeah, no, that's, that's really interesting. Um, and then we've got another question in the chat as well. Um, so and if you wanted to respond to that, feel free to, I'll come to you first for the next question and you can kind of bash a bit of both in there or whatever, whatever you, whatever you wanted to say. Um, but the next question that we've got is kind of related. It's about on a point that was made a little while ago now about how we can really value the kind of small everyday acts of social action. Um, you know, and what are people's thoughts on organisations who give out awards, you know, communications, praising the media, things like that, which are celebrating this idea of kind of small acts, big, big difference. Um, so I think the V Inspired Award is something that that used to do this massively. Um, you know, you've got other things um, that, that do this as well, really credit those kind of small acts and the big difference that they have. What are, what are our thoughts on that? Um, yeah, so yeah, I'll throw that over to you first. Um, yeah, I think that also comes into the idea of, you know, making sure young people don't get burnt out by, you know, making sure they're aware that small acts are just as helpful as the big acts. And, um, you know, sometimes it might just be that one week, all you can do is make an Instagram video for someone or do um, a little bit of feedback to a survey, but it's still, it's still something. Um, and I think it's important to always remind young people to take those breaks. Um, sometimes you might have to force them. Um, I know I was a couple of times when I was in school, balancing you know trying to get into uni and doing loads of social action one of my youth workers turned around and told me I wasn't allowed to go to any events that week because I'd done too much recently and at the time I was a bit annoyed but now I think back and I think I'm glad because I actually took a rest didn't study just took a week off to look after myself um, and now I do make the effort to do that personally um, but also in terms of like those awards for small um, small actions um, I know in Scotland we have like the Saltire Award and that kind of you can get, um, I can't remember the names of it, but there's one that you can get for just doing a day of volunteering. Um, and for some young people, that's them getting recognition for, you know, turning up to a session where they like do some artwork or something. And that can be really helpful, especially for young people who find it difficult to access opportunities, whether they're, you know, in a rural area or they've got um, different needs that they can't turn up to a weekly session. Um, but then this whole tire award also goes up to reward up to, I think it's 500 hours and above. Um, so, you know, there is something for everyone within that, but I think it is always important to recognise those smaller ones because it is often the case that someone not doing, you know, someone not going to do their 500 hours isn't because they don't want to. And even if it is because they don't want to, like their their one day was still something useful to them and useful to the project that they worked on. So I think that's something that's always really important to remember. It's just that it's not all about the, the overall impact. It's about the impact on you and maybe one other person. Yeah, no, definitely. That is, that, that, yeah, no, that is really interesting. That kind of valuing the small impact and the, you know, the way that awards can do that. Yeah, no, 100% love that reflection. Um, right, we are rapidly coming to the end of session. We always run out of time for things like this. I feel like panel discussions could go on for hours and hours and hours. Let's, then I, um, see and Matt, I'm going to put you all on the spot now. Um, we've got a captive audience of amazing organisations here who do so much amazing work to support young people in social action. We gave them three tips earlier on around being clear on the agenda, um, around you know really valuing young people's contributions and letting young people take ownership. If you guys, in 30 seconds each, really succinctly, um, have a tip that you would share for organisations to support young people through their own social action journeys, Matt, I'm going to throw that to you first. And I am um... timing it. 30 seconds right okay um celebrate the little things um honestly celebrating the little things goes so far because if you only celebrate the big things it will only get bigger because you'll be comparing it to what happened last year or whatever and you go oh actually we need to take, take a step up if we celebrate the little things and keep celebrating the little things big things will come because yeah there's that story of a boy throwing starfish back into the sea and someone comes along and going what you're gonna what you're doing is not making any difference he picks one he 
pick small boy picks another one up, throws it back out and seeing goes, it made a difference to that one. Celebrate the little things. Yes, right. Celebrating the little things from Matt Lanai. I think the time is always right to do what's right. And if you even have the smallest amount of power, use it for for positive change and especially to professionals. Um, there's always an opportunity to make change and to make a young person feel like they're heard. And as Matt said, it's not about the size of what you do, it's about the impact. So worry about how you're going to make people feel, not about the numbers of people you reach and things like that. And if you see injustice wherever you see it, um, just feel like you have a duty to fight that um, because I feel like we all should feel that duty. Um, yeah, that's kind of it. Yeah, awesome. Using your power to fight fight against injustices and being aware of that power as well that, that you hold and you know being aware of the power that as an adult you hold in a room over a group of young people. Um, yeah, no, 100%. Um, so yeah, this is now over to you to close. Um, I think you've got the hardest job because Lenai and Matt have stolen two of the things that you could have said. Um, anything that you would, you would share? Um, I think normalise failures for a lot of young people because a lot of young people can come into social actions quite high achievers and not realize what they're setting out to do is not impossible but extremely difficult and normalize that like you're going to have setbacks along the way and not everything does get instant results and um, but you know to support them not to give up on what they're trying to achieve based on a failure and help them build on from that because it can be not just valuable for volunteering but it can be a really valuable life skill in general to you know be able to but build back up from being knocked down. It's really important for young people to have that support there. Yeah, 100%. So we've got celebrating the little things, using your power to challenge inequality wherever you see it and normalising that failure. 100%. Yeah, thank you all so much for sharing insights for your time. Thank you to everyone who has come along today. We've reached the end of our session. Um, we've managed to keep the time, which is incredible. Um, just a quick reminder that this is one of many sessions and activities taking place throughout the whole week. Um, so head over to iwill.org.uk to see the full listing of events, activities and resources. And do keep an eye on the I Will socials as well. They will be popping throughout the week, I'm sure. Um, you can tell people about this session. We're using the hashtag IWillWeek21 and hashtag Power of Youth across all social channels this week. Um, so please go and flood, flood our feeds um, with you know, with, with the amazing things that we see once again. Um, thank you so much for coming along. Thank you, Tony, for dropping those in the chat. Um, thank you to everyone who's kind of supported this session, made it happen. Um, and yeah, have an amazing rest of your day. This is the awkward disappearing now. <laughs>